Okay, welcome everybody and thank you for being here. I know we'll see who else jumps on in just a few minutes, but anyway, we are going to be talking with my friend and professional Stephanie Hicks today. And um, she's gonna be sharing a lot of great information with us about um, confidence, um, spiritual well being, spiritual wellness. And I just want to give you a little bit of background on how we actually met. So I don't even know how many years it's been, maybe six years ago, seven years ago. Um, Stephanie and I met through homeschooling and through that kind of even more so through her career and her profession as a style coach, which was pretty awesome because at that time in my life, I saw what she did. I thought it was so cool because who doesn't need somebody to tell them how to dress? So <laughs> I was really excited about that. And I just, I always thought it'd be like, I love fitness. I love nutrition. I love self-care in that regard. But then that other side of me that felt like needed to be complete and have a full circle moment for my well-being was to know how to dress my body to feel my best according to, you know, I'm eating well, I'm exercising, but like to dress my body was like that missing piece. So I was super thankful to have her in my life to help me with that and my family as well. Um, but it's been some time and I know she's, um, Stephanie used to do, was it um, respiratory therapy in the past? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. So that was, yeah. <laughs> times before. And then anyway, so I met her after that. She was doing, um, she was a stylist coach and then, then I think like confidence and things like that. But now, um, she's currently, uh, working as a transformation and spiritual care coach. She specializes in helping women of faith who have been hurt by their church community. Yeah, I, I could, yeah, I know some people like that church community or have feel like the black sheep of their church community. I felt that way too, um, through the process of deconstructing their religion. I like that with, while keeping their faith so they can find alignment. I like that word alignment between their authentic self, like who they really are and who God created them to be. That's so powerful because that's, there's so much depth to that. And a lot of times we feel like we have God's showing us something or sharing something with us but doesn't necessarily align with what somebody else is hearing from God. And then it feels like, Oh wait, am I, am I doing that? Right. Am I hearing right? Mm -hmm. Or am I doing something yep. wrong? So being able to find people in your life who share that same understanding is huge. I mean, it's like mind blowing. Yep. Cause you're like, Oh my gosh, I'm not alone. This is, this is, it's not just me, but it's okay to hear something different than somebody else might be hearing or maybe Absolutely. an interpretation of something that's personal to me, but somebody else is like, wait, are you sure about that? Yes. <laughs> so exactly. I, that, that is, that's huge. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So like I said before, she's also a certified personal stylist and today she's going to be sharing with us what makes you feel beautiful. You specifically, not the, you, that's your friend or the, you, that's your mom or the, you, <laughs> that's your sister or your daughter or whoever, but what makes you specifically feel beautiful in your skin? It feels like from the inside out, probably, right? Yeah. If I can talk about yep. that, right? Yep. And then, Absolutely. yeah, and then also, yeah, and also becoming more aware of who we are around our beliefs. Oh, yeah, this is good. Around our beliefs, messages, criticisms, and self hate, self hatred. So that sounds like self talk. Is that what you're yeah. talking about? Yep. So self talk, and maybe yep. what we've what we've learned in the past from other people, and kind of maybe our upbringing or um, what people the told negative us. narrative negative. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Negative narrative. So all those things that come into our minds that aren't serving us yep. are helping us grow. Right. Okay. So yeah, this is perfect because in the first two lessons of our, of our um, course and our modules in the ageless body blueprint, we already kind of start talking about beliefs and mindset and how those beliefs and mindset issues can either help us grow or hinder our growth. Mm -hmm. So it's just a matter of kind of figuring out which are the ones to keep and which are the ones to kind of push away depending yeah. on how it's working for us. Right. So it sounds like that's kind of what, where we're going to go with this. Um, yeah. and I love it too, because the way we think and believe gets passed down to generations, right? So it's like, if we can correct our thinking and our beliefs and how we live our lives, it's an example to our children and grandchildren for the future. And we yep. kind of reset that next generation on how we think. And to be more open to hearing from God or just hearing from other people in our lives and discerning wisdom. So yes. that's really cool too. So, okay. So we're going to go a little bit deeper with Stephanie today. She's going to help us uncover the true definition of confidence and beauty and where it's all rooted. That's my favorite part. I'm always about unpeeling the onion. <laughs> I wanted mm -hmm. to find out like, what's at the, like, what's at the core of this and what's really happening 
Um, so yeah, so I'm excited that she's going to share with us today. So please welcome um, my friend and awesome woman of faith, Stephanie Hicks. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> So, um, okay, so let's go ahead and dive into this a little bit. So before we sure. really get into this topic, um, welcome, by the way, welcome. I'm so glad that you're here with us. And so tell us, how about a little bit about yourself, maybe like where you're from, your family, professional background, yeah. even something unique about you. Now we're talking about being black sheep, but something maybe a little bit unique about you that sets you apart. Yeah. So, um, wow. I mean, I could go on and on about myself. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> Let's just hit the highlights. Let's just hit the highlights. So okay. growing up, I did not have any like spiritual background. Um, my mom um, was divorced and I grew up, I have four siblings and I'm the second oldest. So I had a lot of responsibility, but really what I did was just kind of flew under the radar because I, my older brother, I'm like, mm, yeah, I'm not going to make that mistake. Um, mm -hmm. And so that's kind of like flew under the radar of like, not really thinking that I would get my needs met or, you know, like thinking I would be, I'm too much of a, I'm too much, <laughs> too much of a, you know, like it's a hassle or anything that I needed. And so that's the narrative that I grew up with that, that narrative, and though it was never spoken, you know, like, that's just how it felt it's like well mm. there's five of us kids and you know i'm good i don't really need much you know like that kind of thinking and so you can see you can even imagine how that would transform into um, adulthood mm -hmm. <laughs> giving to especially as women Mm -hmm. giving to everyone before we get to ourselves, mm -hmm. you know, not feeling confident about ourselves, um, trying to fit into the mold of everyone else, um, doing what everybody else does because you don't want to feel like the odd man out or even just um, ignoring your passions because it's not the popular thing, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. um, and so it wasn't until I was about 30, mm -hmm. 30, mm -hmm. 30 mm -hmm. years old. <laughs> <laughs> it's never too late. But like, until I was about 30, I was like, wait a minute. And I mean, I had kids at this point, you know, like three of them. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. Um, and it really was my daughter, my youngest, mm -hmm. who set me on my path because mm -hmm. I wanted to be um, a role model for her. I didn't want her to grow up with the mindset that I did. I wanted her to be confident in who she was and not worry about what other people think she looked like and, you know, like all the things that teenagers or girls worry about. Mm, yeah. And it started with our hair as mm. an African-American woman. Yeah. <laughs> we, I had relaxed hair and had had relaxed hair since I was like 10. Okay. So I did not know what my hair did. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't know what the real thing looked like or anything. Mm -hmm. And then there was like this natural hair movement and, um, for African-Americans where it's okay. like, you know, be, be okay with your hair. Mm -hmm. And so my husband is white. Mm -hmm. And so my daughter has like curly hair. Her curls are a little bigger than mine, but um, she came home from kindergarten. Mm -hmm. No, was it? Yes. Kindergarten it was like, my mom wants straight hair like everybody else. Mm -hmm. And I was just mm -hmm. like, what? Your hair is beautiful. <laughs> and you don't need to worry about what anybody else thinks it, you know, like or whatever. Oh yeah. Lo and behold, here I am with a relaxer. <laughs> and I was yeah. all like contradict yeah hmm, I should probably practice what I preach <laughs> yeah and so it just sent me down this whole you know whole adventure whole journey of like just being myself being comfortable in my skin with how I look like literally the way that God created me and it's not just looks but also in personality um discovering that my too much is just enough and if it's too much for some people then you're not my people mm -hmm. you know and so really and being okay with that like you're mm -hmm. not everybody's cup of tea mm -hmm. 
and that's okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there's different flavors, <laughs> you yeah. know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And there's different flavors for a reason. Yeah. No, I love so, that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's really where, and here I am today, 15, 16 years later, mm-hmm. and I am, uh, I literally don't care <laughs> what other people think. Sometimes to a fault where I have to check myself and be like, come on, Steph, you got to care a little bit. I'm like, mm, all right. <laughs> right. Just a, a little, a little filter discernment, I guess. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Uh-huh, yeah. Don't swing the pendulum too far the other way. Right. That, that's a good point, right? Yeah. Cause it's easy, yeah. especially when we're coming from one extreme and it's like, oh, I'm so tired of this extreme. Like I'm done. And then it's yeah. easy to go to the other side and it's like, okay, wait. There has to be something in the middle. That way, that yes. way you can um, reach people better, effect- exactly. more effectively too. Otherwise, if yep. they're like, "Oh wait, am I? It's too much," you know, and just finding yeah. that that happy medium. So exactly. I, I like how you use that word. Um, you felt like you were too much. What when you say that? What do you mean by like? How would you describe too much? Um, so I don't know if you notice, but like how I talk, I'm very animated <laughs> <laughs> or like when I'm talking about something that I'm super passionate about, mm-hmm. I, it can maybe even sometimes sound like I'm yelling, but <laughs> I'm not, I'm just passionate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, or, okay. um, even just like having ideas that are outside of, you know, outside the box, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. even questioning people like, well, why do you feel you need to do it that way? Is, mm. is that a requirement or is that just the way that you prefer things to be done? Like mm. there's another way to do that, you know, you know, um, yeah. so it's just mm-hmm. too much for people to okay. you know, like, no. And it's usually people who are, um, inflexible. Mm. Not right. so much for people that are inflexible. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if they're already set in their ways and mm-hmm. they're like, wait, why are you challenging it? This isn't like, mm-hmm. it, it doesn't make sense to them. Like, why would somebody challenge it? This has been going change? great for 20 years. Why would we change it? <laughs> right. right. Well, I think, I think what happens too is once you start to see otherwise outside of the box, then we're looking in the box. It's hard to not say something. Yeah. Right. Because it, it's, but- it's so clear to you, but for them, it, it, it's like not even on the radar. Yeah. Right? It's yeah. Like, you know, there's a, there's mm-hmm. other ways to get to this destination. You know that, right? I know. <laughs> you I don't know. have to do the same thing and it's okay. Right. That's good. And that's, that's very challenging. I know it's, yeah. and that's what I'm learning too. One of our, our pastors was telling me um, a couple of weeks ago, she said, hmm, like with me and with what we're discuss- discussing too, but if you have a concept of something and you know that, that this is one of the best ways to go about it mm-hmm. <clears throat> and you're speaking to somebody but they're not really receptive. It's because they're not at that level of understanding yet. Exactly. So she said, you just have to come in with compassion and, and understanding like, Oh, like, you know, like with children, you know, they're, you can talk to a young child and ex- have adult expectations, but if they're not at that level of maturity or understanding what you're saying to them, doesn't make sense. So it feels like they're closed, mm-hmm. but they haven't arrived at that point yet that us, we have arrived at yet at that level of understanding. So for me, that was huge because it was yeah. hard for me to let go of that. Like, how do you not understand? Like, this is like, I'm giving you exactly what to do, giving you an opportunity for freedom, but, and they hear it, but then at the same time, it's like, why aren't you doing it? Like, and why are you go- pushing against it? And it's because of their level of understanding isn't there. So for me, having to come at it with a side of compassion, angle of compassion was huge. Yeah. So, um, and- and you know, it's not even always about their level of understanding. It could be the resistance could be because of this negative narrative that they have or this indoctrination or whatever that they have is like, wait, that doesn't fit the script. So mm-hmm. I don't understand how you're getting to the same conclusion or to that conclusion because I there's a formula that mm-hmm. I'm supposed to follow and you're not following the formula. Mm. So wait a minute, <laughs> you know, like it really, so throw, it could just be like, yeah. Mm. And, it's, and it's, it could be a, a, a processing, you know, mm-hmm. a way that they learn this, you know, we learn this through cr- classical conversations, like right. everyone learns differently. Mm-hmm. And so the way that you're teaching something could be different than the way that the person learns it. And so they just, they, they can't comprehend, they can't process what it is that you're trying to tell them. 
Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So I was just thinking too. So you've been through different seasons of life with professions and, and understanding and revelation for what you're doing now. How did, what, what came about for you as far as a revelation, revelation for what you needed to do at this point? Yeah. So what, you know, working with women with style, um, what, really what that really boiled down to was um everyone who came to me is like hey i need to work on my style i need to work on you know like my clothes just tell me what to wear and i'm like mm. well you know i could tell you what to wear but if you don't feel good about it if it doesn't speak to you then it's it's irrelevant you know mm -hmm. and just asking deeper questions it really boiled down to confidence and um a foundation um i I always ended up teaching women about like confidence and really their values. Mm. And so my style packages weren't just, they weren't style packages. They were, <laughs> it was like life coaching. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was like, you know, and I really just love that aspect. To me, the biggest, the biggest, like, where I get all of my feels from is when a woman's mind changes from, oh, I can't do this and I have to do it this way to like, you know what, I could do this however I want to and it's okay if I try and I feel, you know, like I'll just do something different and see if that works for me. Like, mm. that's the bit, like, I'm like, yes, now we're living, yes, you know, like now yes. we're living. this is trial and error, let's do it, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, and so I realized that that was where my joy was and mm -hmm. what God was calling me to do. Mm -hmm. And I was literally like resistant for mm -hmm. four years. I was like, mm -hmm. ah, God, get somebody else, get somebody else to do it. Get somebody mm -hmm. else. I don't want to work with people. I don't, <laughs> I don't even want, I don't want to work with people like women who mm. have been hurt by the church no wow. get somebody else to do it i do not mm. want to yeah and he's just like okay well let's just do baby steps and so then mm. it was like oh i love this transformation let's do transformation coaching you know like and for whatever reason every <laughs> woman that came to me was a woman of faith mm. and it was something in their religious background that told them that they were not worthy enough, weren't good enough, shouldn't be doing this, and that a Christian woman is supposed to look like this box, mm -hmm. and that's it. Mm -hmm. So how did, what type of, um, I, don't, I, I don't know if we can share this really, but what the church that you grew up in, is that kind of mm -hmm. what shaped the box that you're describing, or how did you experience that so like i said i didn't have any religious background mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. i didn't become uh, like a follower of christ until i was like 22. okay so later in uh, life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and okay. i think that that's part of <clears throat> my spiritual journey mm -hmm. so that um i could have the experience of something outside of church mm -hmm. to yeah. help other women like that you you know that that's that's not a you don't have to, <laughs> you don't have to do that, right? <laughs> you know, um, like, like you mean like religious tradition or religious? Yes, religious tradition. Beliefs or practice um, outside mm -hmm. of yeah. scripture. Yeah, like you okay. don't have to work for mm. worthiness. Mm. That's not a thing. Mm. And, um, you know, there are a lot of religious backgrounds that will tell you that you have to put in work in order to get that salvation. Mm. And it's like, that's, um, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't, which Bible are you reading? I just <laughs> want to know the, <laughs> where do you find that? Which one was, <laughs> don't read the scripture, please. <laughs> um, yeah. So, and, so that, that makes sense though. But so with worthiness, that's, that's big too. We talked about this. We had another lady on Emily yeah. Lewis and she's a worthiness coach and she talked mm. about that in depth, but how have, how have you found, um, Actually, how have, you, how have you found that women have been hurt by the church? Like in, in what ways and then how do you help them get like get over that or heal through that? Or how does that work? Yeah, I think that, and I don't know that churches do this intentionally, at least most of the, from 
the um, experiences that I've had is that okay. it's just easier for church leaders when everyone is doing the same thing mm -hmm. so that they can, mm -hmm. you know, like make sure that everybody's managed and, you mm -hmm. know, like quote unquote taken care of, but right. it's just easier if we're all doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. And so they throw out like these blanket kind of like rules or this is the way our church does it um, kind of thing. And it just doesn't work for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, and while it's easier for them, it's not easier for the congregation because then you have women who feel like they have to perform a certain mm -hmm. way in order mm -hmm. to be blessed, you oh. know, or do certain things in order to be right with God. That's and so um, and even just like the fact that some some of my clients, some of the clients that I work with, you know, will will like share that. You know, our church leader told me like this is the vision that God has for your life, and I'm all I'm like, wait. So let me let me get this straight. Jesus died on a cross so that you can have a personal relationship with God, but He sent the message for your life through somebody else. Mm. Oh right, 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 right. Yeah. I think I think that yeah. He would tell you what he wants for your life, not somebody else. Like, you yeah. know, and so, yeah, yeah. so <laughs> and that kind of like, kind of open that up. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. Are you and I think the uh -huh. the the most detrimental question for uh -huh. women of faith uh -huh. is someone asking them, are you sure? Hmm. Because it places so much doubt <laughs> on yeah. what God has called you to do, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> like, yeah. are you sure that's what you're supposed Are you sure that's what he said? And, like, if you even take it back to the Garden of Eden, what was it that the snake asked pretty much? Are you are sure? Are you sure <laughs> that's what God said? Oh. Uh -huh. Like that's the worst question to ask. I, I know. Wait, what? I know. <laughs> and, like, and, and it makes you think, like, wait, am I sure? Did he really say that? Maybe he. <gasps> hmm. Yeah. And it makes you question yourself, and it makes mm. you doubt the words that God has given you specifically right. for your for life. Sure. Right. Yeah. And th that's the thing. It's 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 scary to question it too. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes you will have we'll know something and believe something, but it's like, is it okay to? question it you know it's scary too because anything yeah like you're doing something completely wrong and like falling out of faith you know all and relationship with god because you're questioning mm -hmm. it yeah but then when but once you feel that freedom to do that then there's so much growth from at that next level yeah so yeah yeah the best question is help me understand Mm -hmm. help me understand where you're coming from because that gives that person um freedom to be able to explain okay. like here's right. my thought process here's where right. I, you know like and then god told me this and i felt like the spirit was moving you know like right. yeah and it was right. just like an aha moment for me you know mm -hmm. and so that is mm -hmm. a more empowering question help me right. understand you know as yeah. opposed to mm, are you sure because when anyone says are you sure there's just this hint of doubt like do you really think that's what, <laughs> is that what yeah. you're supposed to do? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. But then, but then it comes across more as like judgy than, yeah, absolutely. Than, than wanting to understand, like, but, and, and maybe truly, honestly, wanting to understand because you, you can even learn from that. You know, yeah. Like, tell me about this because yep. maybe there's, uh, there's pieces of that I can learn from and take mm -hmm. away from and push away. So, yeah, I mean, even like for me, I, I grew up in the Catholic church. So, since I was baptized and as a baby and everything, and then I grew up, um, it was more about just um, what you do, not what you do, it's the tradition. So it's tradition, mm -hmm. not really like yeah. relationship, very yeah. religious, obviously. So, and then I got married Catholic and, but also grew up um, in a Baptist school, like elementary school and everything. So I was hearing other like different things from different people, but then, and then also from my parents. So I was able to kind of luckily able to form my own thoughts and then grow up in a more spirit-filled home. So yeah. rely on more on the relying more on the Holy Spirit for mm -hmm. knowledge and revelation. 
And then the other things that were, I was coming in from the outside was just um, either a f- confirming or in affirming or same thing. Wait a second. Yeah. That doesn't match what I'm- Confirming, I'm... affirming. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. All those, yeah. And just, it, and if it, and I could decide whether it matched what I felt. And for me, what I really realized too, is it's really about what the, what fruit it produces. Yes. If it's not, if it's producing- not through the spirit, but if it's, you know, uh, fear or anxiety or overwhelm yes. or confusion, yep. I was like, wait, no, that's, that's not God. <laughs> right. Or maybe I have to right. ask God, maybe if, if this is right, it's just my, my flesh being confused, you know, from my own belief. So that's a whole nother thing. Like unpacking right. beliefs. Right. So, um, yeah, like what, what was I believing in is maybe what you're saying is there's, but there's gotta be so much, you know, going on from like, the transition from knowing what you know from the past or belief from the past and then learning something new that you can question those things. That's like a whole nother level of. Yeah. Wow, see, the thing know. is, mm-hmm. is that people don't understand like um, environment plays a big role in mm-hmm. what you believe, right? Mm-hmm. It's not mm-hmm. just um, like, so growing up, if mm-hmm. you have been dealt those stories and then something comes along to challenge those stories, Mm-hmm. Um, most people are like, no, that's not true. You know, like immediately where it's like a healthy response mm-hmm. to a challenge of a story or a narrative that you have would be like, huh, where did I get my belief from? Mm-hmm. Cause a lot of our beliefs are just given to us right. by parents, friends, family, you know, yeah. something like that without question because we trust those those people we trust our friends and our family and you know like and people in our environment we trust that and so a lot of those beliefs we just accept without questioning right and so really what i do now is i teach people how to question Uh question their beliefs that's what that's all deconstruction is so how how do how do they realize that to question is it because some things aren't matching or how do they even get yes. to that place yes okay. it really is it's like wait a minute something feels off here mm. something mm. is not right and i can't make it align because it doesn't mm. go together so mm. i got a lot of clients recently just because of the last couple of years with covid and you know like social justice and racial issues and, you know, like gender role issues and all the things that have, you know, like boiled up to the top of the surface that everyone is like Mm. talking about, you know, Mm. Mm -hmm, Um, mm -hmm. and even with deconstruction, like it's Mm -hmm. a myth that deconstruction means leaving the faith because you don't have to leave the faith in order to deconstruct things that you once believe. It really is just questioning mm. what it, and I feel like it should be a natural part of yeah. people's spiritual journey. Yeah, because we want we want to grow. You want to grow. Who stays the more. same? Like, I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> you're staying the same? Yeah, yeah. It's our desire to grow, right? And it's, yeah, it's exactly. Yeah. yeah. Like what and, new and information more- are you uh-huh. gaining by right. staying the exact same? It's like, wow, that is, that's, scary to me yeah, <laughs> if you yeah. want to just stay the way that you are yeah I know, I know. yeah um, and so, sometimes and that's just you know and then we just pray for eye-opening experiences like exactly whoa but you know. mm-hmm. but yeah I just I got a lot of people because they felt something off in the church or mm-hmm. you know like they would hear people saying a certain thing like oh no we we do believe that you know like God is in control but here let us control this one this part mm-hmm. you know or <laughs> mm-hmm. but everybody should be doing this and you mm-hmm. know like I do, you know, like you don't have to have your quiet time every day, but I do believe that if you are a strong mm. disciple, that quiet time should be done first thing in the morning. It's like, wait, you, you, you're, you're saying two different things. Like, mm. right. <laughs> like, right. Mm-hmm. Quiet mm-hmm. times don't need to be done in the morning, but to be, make sure that you are starting your day off right. And you know, like whatever, <laughs> then you should do it at like the butt crack of dawn. It's like, that's, that's an opinion like right, <laughs> right. that you're preaching from the pulpit mm-hmm. as if though is the say of the Lord. Mm-hmm. And so being mm-hmm. able to question, think mm-hmm. that's that, and that's just small. That's not even, that's minute. Cause I can hear that in service and just be like, yeah, whatever, okay, whatever. you know, yeah. like, yeah. I'm not even gonna, 
I'm not going to, you know, like give the energy to that because I already know that my faith walk is my faith walk and I don't have to have my quiet times at 6 a.m. I am just rolling. I'm not even rolling over at that point in time. Like I'm I'm not a morning person, you know, like and really understanding that my faith walk and my spiritual journey Mm. is really about me and my Mm. relationship with God that Mm. pours out into my relationship with others. It is not about my relationship with others that feed my relationship with God. Mm -hmm. And so Mm -hmm. when you understand the flow of your Mm -hmm. spiritual relationship, it just Mm -hmm. changes the perspective Mm -hmm. of a lot of things, right? Mm -hmm. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, this is so good. I know it's like like we can talk about this forever. (laughs) Okay, so let's talk, let's kind of, let's switch gears a little bit. This is good. Sure. Um, Okay, so how does this, relate. So we'll talk about confidence now. So how does this mm-hmm. kind of roll into having confidence? And then we'll talk about more superficial things, wardrobe. So how does this, we'll talk about confidence first. So how does this yeah. help women feel more confident or how, how does it all come together? Yeah. So I think that um, disentangling yourself from those beliefs that, that are, that you're really indoctrinated with when you go to church, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I do feel like a lot of churches indoctrinate you with their beliefs mm-hmm. of what should be as opposed to what the bible says what mm-hmm. should be and mm-hmm. if you can take any scripture in the bible and switch and twist it to make it yeah. something for you. yeah to work for you right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and so like really just being able to understand those scriptures but in that doctrine indoctrination process with a lot of churches is that they make you feel like you don't have the answers Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. that you don't know right from wrong Mm -hmm. or that you couldn't possibly comprehend Mm -hmm. (laughs) how to run your life and so and it's just like bit by bit Mm -hmm. and so you end up giving away your power you Mm -hmm. give away your discernment you give away your agency Mm -hmm. voluntarily Mm -hmm. because you think that Mm -hmm. it's the right thing to do and that it is going to help you to be a more spiritual woman. So, so, so giving yourself that freedom and understanding will begin to build into your confidence because you're going to yeah. a place that you know, know when more you, wouldn't necessarily go to. Yeah. When you yeah. take back your agency, mm-hmm. take back your own discernment, mm-hmm. then you are, you have that, that actually builds your confidence, mm-hmm. making, making a decision mm-hmm. and it, working through that builds your confidence making a decision and it falls through Mm -hmm. you're like "Mm, should have chose the the second thing Mm -hmm. it builds your confidence though um like okay i I, okay i can learn from this though you know Mm -hmm. when those things are taken away Mm -hmm. is when you're just like i'm just you're pretty much just a Mm -hmm. robot and just doing what somebody else tells you to do so you're Mm -hmm. not your true self yeah like thinking for yourself right Mm -hmm. yeah you're not Mm -hmm. your true self you're not doing the things or even functioning in the way that God mm. designed you to function. So why so, would you have confidence? <laughs> that, I know the desert year, cause you're there's, there, there's no vulnerability opportunity for vulnerability. So it's hard to build confidence when you're doing that. Yeah. yeah. So how, so outside of um, the church and talking, when we were working with women who were, you were helping with styling and, and yes. coaching all that stuff. What did you find in that regard, as far as they would dress themselves, but confidence wasn't in what they were wearing. How did you realize that confidence was something more? At that point? Yeah. So, um, even just the fashion industry is just, mm-hmm. um, it's a racket. <laughs> it's tell a us, racket. Tell us. <laughs> the fashion industry is a racket. And basically the way that it is now and ever since is, mm-hmm is that they tell you, they're telling you what is beautiful. Mm. And the statement that beauty is in the eye of the beholder, that is actually more true than anything else. Like to me, I think freckles are beautiful. I think beauty marks or any of any Mm. sort is beautiful. I think gray hair is beautiful. Mm. I think like all of these things is beautiful to me, Mm. but the fashion industry tells you, no, (laughs) you don't, it's, Mm. it's shameful to grow old. It's, mm-hmm. you know, like you should have clear skin, um, even tone, you know, like all of these things. And it's mm-hmm. like, but that's not the way that God created you. And mm-hmm. so I think that 
what I found with most women Mm -hmm. um, was that they were trying to fit into that beauty standard. Mm -hmm. And also Mm -hmm. it's like, not every woman is created the same. Like we all don't have blue eyes, blonde hair. We all don't have straight hair. We all don't have pale skin. We all don't have, you know, like a uh, stick figure bodies. <laughs> Come on, realistically? <laughs> Thinking of molds. I mean, like, <laughs> yeah. Right? And so right. it's like, and I, and I remember when Dove came out with a real woman wear curves. I was like, okay, now you make making other women feel bad who I don't have say- curves. I mean, like. <laughs> I understand what you're trying to do, but also stop. Yeah, yeah that's like with me and the mannequins in, at the mall. I'm like, yeah. it's either one or the other. It's I wear at Target the other day. I told my kids, I'm like, it's either a real a thin one, a really fit, muscular, almost masculine looking one, or a really heavy, like real, like one extreme or the other. Yes. And then I was like, isn't there like an in between or there... just I don't know? What do you do? I don't just... Know, just just. Stuff on hangers. Can we just do that? Can we just put it on a hanger and just let that keep be. it neutral? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Or one of those form, those those form things. What are those? Like, I don't know if they're called. Oh, but... the uh, the you... dress forms. Yes, yes, yeah, like that. Because that's just well, general. even it's the, very even neutral. the dress forms yeah. are like I have two. I have one for small, medium, and medium okay. to large. Uh, like, <laughs> are they are they do they adjust? Looks like it has like they some adjust, adjustments. Yeah. To... Oh, they adjust. Yeah. Yeah. So we go I back also to that. alter clothes too, but anyway, uh, yeah, that's, that's <laughs> cool. Yeah. Very neat. So, um, yeah. okay. So what are we talking about? Okay. So, um, fashion, we we're talking about fashion and how that's yeah. obviously in the fashion industry. Yeah. Yeah. And the mold and everything. So, um, so then had, so what about the confidence side of this? So is it, how are women lacking confidence in that area? Is it because they're not fitting the mold? Is that what you're saying? Because they, they don't, don't fit know? the mold. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The, these, um, fairy tale molds is what I call them. Yeah. yeah. Fairy tale mold is this people are trying to fit into these boxes. Again, it's the fitting into boxes of what society mm-hmm. says you mm-hmm. should look like, how you should be, what a, it, just going down the list, like what a Christian woman should look like or be, or how mm-hmm. she should be, how any woman in the world should look, how mm-hmm. fit you should be, how skinny you should be, where where your curves should be. It's mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. there are for style, there's five um, body types. Okay. And even those body types are like mm. general. Yeah. <laughs> I guess, I guess like, yeah, even like you have to, you have to somehow, I don't know, come up with something. I, I don't even, I mean, there has to be, I guess some structure, but it, obviously it's not what God created. Yeah. God's super creative in what he does and it's super creative. Fit molds. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, and it's like, oh, yeah. you're a pear shape. You're an apple shape. You're a oh, like, banana shape. Like, can we enough with the fruit? <laughs> like, <laughs> is, is that a thing? Banana shape? Yes. That oh, is what? the rectangle shape. Pretty oh, okay. much. That's yeah, it. like you don't have any curves, <laughs> just <laughs> a rectangle. I'm like, That's interesting. Yeah, great. I'm a banana. You know, like mm. <laughs> that's like. Funny. Can we just stop that's with it? So for when yeah. while I did it, it's just mm-hmm. I'm like, let's just take your measurements and let's mm-hmm. work with the measurements that you oh, have. Okay. We're not gonna sense. label it anything. Right. We are just these are the measurements that you have the bust the waist and the hips and those are the those are the measurements that you need to take care of um sometimes the hips are wider than the bust sometimes the busts are wider than the hips right (laughs) it's just it that's our it is and one side is different than the other yes exactly yeah sometimes Mm -hmm. your shoulders are broad sometimes they're narrow you know right and even different seasons of life even different seasons of life too right it could change it obviously it changes right so and then and, and rolling with that like Right. So one yep. of the things I think I mentioned this too in our Zoom before, but about we you know with the different mannequins and body shapes. Um what was I gonna say? That um yeah, that obviously it changes over time, but not but not to allow those body shapes to make to allow us to become complacent in self-care, yeah. right? Or yeah. or saying, yeah. Oh, it's okay. Well, and it is okay. This it's it's this this is so hard because there it's kind of twofold. It is okay. Of course, it's to be different shapes. It's not about that, but we also still want to practice excellence, right? And take yeah. self care and everything. So, and whatever and shape that what? turns out to be is whatever it turns out to be. 
and it's even changing that sense. like mm -hmm. we want mm -hmm. it to be excellent to mm -hmm. like we want to be healthy right we want right. to be healthy right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it doesn't have because you know like when people think excellence they're like oh well what's the definition of excellence okay it's this what people are saying or what society says is perfect and beautiful and flawless right mm -hmm. versus like oh what is healthy for you mm -hmm. and even what healthy for you is today may be different in a year or two right right like because we're not um we're not static people it mm -hmm. fluctuates mm -hmm. um it's not we're not a monolith you know like right. we are, yeah, we are we're dynamic. dynamic yeah uh -huh. yes we are dynamic people and we have different lifestyles like if you are currently working a nine to five and you're in an office or whatever you have a sedentary more than likely a sedentary lifestyle which means that you have to compensate for just mm -hmm. sitting Mm -hmm. well maybe when you retire you become more active you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. like and so mm -hmm. at that point in time what is healthy when you get there mm -hmm. you know versus having the sedentary life so it's not about like what is excellent i don't think mm -hmm. i think it okay. is what is the most healthy mm -hmm. for you um mm -hmm. and where you are in your life right for that season yeah in, mm -hmm. in healthy in all regards mind body yes. soul, spirit like yes. we're, we're not just physical obviously yeah so taking care of all of us and even like through pregnancies and grandchildren you know just travel yeah and, or working a nine to five you know or yeah homeschooling you know whatever yes. you know with the years of your kids being at a, you know in school age yeah it's all different seasons and then you have you just live your life according to that and we have so right? much mm -hmm. yeah and we have so much um uh chatter Mm -hmm. with social media on like what those things should look like or like for instance you said like a pregnant pregnant body right mm -hmm. like what is excellence for a pregnant body it really should be just a matter of like what are you are you taking care of the baby are you taking mm -hmm. care of yourself right that's going to look different for everybody mm -hmm. and you see like all this information this input coming in on social media like oh it's my baby bump you know like oh, this, this stuff is so cute it's so tiny and it's like let me tell you i gained a cold 50 pounds with my last kid <laughs> it was not cute <laughs> and ankles are swollen you know what i'm saying like yeah. it's like what yeah oh, yeah I don't look, I don't look like an Instagram pregnant woman. I'm just telling you. And <laughs> Me so, like, neither. Yeah. Uh -huh. And so yeah. it just like, we have to be very careful of like what the input is that says mm. excellence or versus, okay. or that says healthy right. versus what is actually right. healthy for you. Right. Right. That's so my true. health. My healthy is going to look different than your healthy for sure. versus, mm -hmm. you know, Annette's or Patrice's healthy. Right. Yeah. No, I love it. That's so true. So then, um, speaking of body shapes, so I know it's a thing, but yeah. I mean, any, I don't know, little tips on how to, I mean, obviously different seasons of life, but just a general idea of what, yeah, I don't know what works or yeah. How to, how to get started. Yeah. That. So that is literally a whole lesson. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> literally a whole lesson because okay. like I said before there are five different body shapes that okay. are accounted for okay. but then also you're taking height into account you're taking mm. um, people can be short but yet long limbed or okay. high waisted um. or low waist or you know what I'm saying like so it's like torso shoulders. size yeah, yeah torso okay. legs you know like I okay. am a long leg short torso person okay. so the way that my clothes look on me is mm -hmm. gonna and is gonna look different than someone else mm. who is also five nine but okay. has a long torso shorter mm. waist because okay. their legs are shorter you know so yeah um, so it's tailored to, to your specific specifications like to yeah yeah and i mm -hmm. and i can't i would mm -hmm. so that the fashion industry or like mm -hmm. with any clothing if i like if you wanted to become a stylist mm -hmm. or whatever mm -hmm. the goal is to make the body look balanced okay and so the hourglass shape is mm -hmm. the balance not because it's curvy or whatever or skinny waist but 
because it's symmetrical okay. vertically and horizontally. I see. That uh, hourglass is symmetrical both ways. And so okay. if you just think of that, like um, symmetric, symmetrical uh, horizontally and vertically, mm -hmm. that even just that little tidbit can help you to dress in a more balanced way. Okay. Um, when you are, say, five, how, how tall are you? Uh, five, six. Five, six. Five, six. Okay. Uh -huh. So you're five, six. Um, and you have maybe short legs mm -hmm. and a long torso. Mm -hmm. If you're five, six, short legs, long torso, you're not going to be wearing like a tunic shirt because that's uh, going to make your legs look even shorter. Uh, right. <laughs> Right. So for you, you uh -huh. want to kind of accentuate like or not even accentuate, but just like show where your waistline is okay. so that your legs look longer. Got and it. you might even want to give yourself a, a lot of people don't even know where their waistline is. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people <laughs> are like, oh, my waistline is down here, like at their hips. That's not your waistline. Your waistline mm -hmm. is at your belly button. Your okay. belly button is your waistline. If okay. you mm -hmm. lean over to the side. Mm -hmm. where that crease is that mm -hmm. is your waistline uh -huh. <laughs> everyone's yeah let's test it <laughs> there it, oh i see yeah. yeah okay okay that's your waistline that okay. is where you should be wearing your belts that's where okay. you should be wearing anything that you know like you like you want to yeah. um accentuate your waistline mm -hmm. that's where that is now if you have a high waistline mm -hmm. and a big bust but mm -hmm. narrow hips Right. And you do not want to accentuate your waistline. Okay. There, right. Okay. Oh, because it would be and too high, right? Too high. Okay. And or you could accentuate it and then wear something flowy to kind of give a balance oh. of the bigger bust and the narrow hips. Right. So it's all about sym symmetry, like creating symmetry. symmetry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so so no matter so the waist is the, obviously it's your center point, right? Your waist mm -hmm. is your center point. Yep. And then creating. So what if you have narrow shoulders? If you have narrow shoulders with and, a wider, and wider hips, wider hips, which right. is generally the pear shape, okay. Uh, <laughs> what you want to do, you can do embellishments up at the neckline. So that's okay. where you know, like when people wear ruffles on their sleeves or they wear like the poofier sleeves, uh -huh. that brings about balance. Or you can wear like a chunky, chunky necklace because uh -huh. it brings the eye up as opposed to keeping the eye towards the bottom uh -huh. of the outfit. And then the other way around. So if you had narrow hips and wide shoulders, then you would mm -hmm. maybe like a a pattern or something that would make your hips look a little bit wider. I don't know. Yes, would you would do yeah. like patterns or like pleats, pleats mm -hmm. or something that um that uh what do they call it? The uh it's been a minute since I did this. Um it's the <laughs> uh, it's the uh um it's not a line. Yeah, well I guess it could be a line. You could do a line because that mm -hmm. brings it out like 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 from, a, your, from right? your waist yeah yeah okay. from your waistline down uh -huh. so like things that are like a line but you don't want to do like a fit it because then that would not be balanced because it'll be big mm -hmm. up top it's still slim at the bottom okay yeah so for so, somebody to yeah go ahead go ahead so any anything that's like the um like uh those fitted skirts with the pleat with the slits or you know you don't want to do those you want to do like something that gives a little bit more body towards the bottom. Got it. Okay. So yeah, just symmetry. So no matter where your body is, your body shape is. And then what yeah. about like accentuating certain parts of your body? Let's say there's something that you really like. How does, I mean, how does that work? You just kind of. Yeah. Like, uh -huh. yeah, I would say, um, find out. You would be amazed that like, this is the question I ask everybody. I don't, anybody I work with, I, ask, I just say, give me five things that you love about yourself. Mm -hmm. you would be amazed at how many like things that like people are like well I like that I do and I like that I no 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 give me five and literally those five things are not usually things about their body mm -hmm. I'm like oh that's so cute now give me five things that you like about your body oh hey <laughs> sp speaking of that actually I'm gonna pause you hang on a sec so speaking of that so um ladies and if, if anybody's watching this recording too um, you can put in the chat if you have any like quick questions for Stephanie before like, we wrap up in just a few minutes. Yeah. Um, that way she can answer some of your questions about any of these things. But if you're wondering about clothing or or, or uh, confidence or all, any of those things, you can put mm -hmm. it in there and we can answer it. So if you're wondering how to dress your body type, maybe or 
how to start, then maybe you can, you can ask that as well. Anyway. Okay. So, um, <laughs> these are just practical things. I just thought it'd be really cool to have to yeah. take away and just say, okay, this is okay. So, so along with dressing body type, what about, um, like going into the store for me, just walking into a store is overwhelming. Like I know I want something, but I go in there and I get distracted or I'm like, oh shoot, what did I come in for? And then I see something else that looks cute, but then I try it on. It doesn't look like I thought it would. Um, how, like, how do you even like walk into a store and know even where to like get started and not feel so like, ah, yes. I'm just going to run out of here and, you know, yes. go home. Yes. So most most women that I find that say they don't like going shopping is not because I mean, who doesn't like getting something new? That's ridiculous. Yes. You sound ridiculous right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like shopping. Like, mm, I think that you don't like going into the store and mm -hmm. being disappointed. Mm. I think that you don't know how to dress your body. Mm. And so when you go in, you just maybe go to the sales rack or you go to, you see something on a mannequin and be like, hmm, that looks good. And we already discussed the mannequins. So we already know that it's not going to look the same on your body. <laughs> right. <laughs> we talked about those already. Right. So, but I guess you can I look for something too that would like, you know, can talk about symmetry. Like let's say you have narrow shoulders, like, okay, I guess I need something with puffier sleeves or something. But you have anyway. to know that before you go in. So okay. there's a lot of work that you have to do before you even go shopping, right? Okay. Okay. You have to know your body. You should never go shopping without your knowing what your measurements are, the bust, the waist, and the hips. Okay. Because the numbers that are in the uh, clothing, those change. Okay. Uh, yeah. Eight today was a four of, in the 50s. Really? Yes. Wow. <laughs> Just wow. The history of clothing is wild, but wow. Okay. Yes. A eight today was a four, like in the fifties. So ah, okay. you don't even really want to and, don't and even, worry and even about that. Brand to brand. It's so and different. even brand to brand is different. Things fit differently. It's like people, there's certain things about like the ease of a garment. That's too much information for y'all. But so when you go into a store, you want to know like those three measurements about your body so mm -hmm. that you can go by the measurement, not the number of the of the size. Okay. Um, and go in ready to try things on. A lot of women want to go into a store and just be like, ah, this looks like it's fine and not try things on. Take your time. Don't um, rush shop. If it if you are making exceptions in the store for something that you want, you're not going to wear it when you get home. Mm -hmm. If you're mm -hmm. like, well, this is not the exact color that I wanted, but the price is right. Mm. You're not gonna wear it. Or it's like, well, it's just got this one part right here that I don't really like, but you know, like everything else is fine. When you get home, you're mm. not gonna wear it because it's got that one part that you don't like. Mm. You're gonna focus <laughs> so on that, it. right? And it's uncomfortable or whatever. Yeah. It's not comfortable. Your okay. clothes should be comfortable. You're, and even just think of that, beauty does not mean pain. I don't mm. know who came up with that. I would like to punch them in the throat. <laughs> because it's not true. <laughs> uh, it's your clothes to be comfortable where you can wear them throughout the whole day. Mm. If you can only wear it for a couple of hours, it's not for you. Okay. If you're like, well, I guess I could wear this for maybe like half a day. I'm only going to this one thing and I'm come home and I'm a chank. Don't do it. Okay. You shouldn't even go to the store to buy an outfit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Shocker. What you should be doing is knowing what's in your wardrobe already. Uh -huh. And when you buy an outfit, it should go with other items in your uh, wardrobe. That's huge. Yeah. <laughs> like uh -huh. you buy a shirt and a skirt. The skirt should be able to go to go with at least three other things in your wardrobe. And the okay. shirt should be able to go with at least three other things in your wardrobe. Uh, Everything okay. that you purchase should be able to go with at least three other things in your wardrobe. If you okay. can't figure out three, put it back on the shelf because you only go have two outfits. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or that's right. one. Yeah. And, or not use it. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so when you, before you, I remember you taught me too, before I going into the store, having almost like, like a grocery list, like knowing exactly yep. what I'm looking for, like write it down and just focus, like going to that thing. Yes. Otherwise then it's like, ah, where do I start? 
Right. And stores are designed to distract you, right? Mm -hmm. That's why the mannequins are at the front with the latest trends, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, me personally, I have my list and I go straight to the sales rack. <laughs> the sales rack is not always the best rack, but you can right. find things from your list on the sales rack. If it's not the right color, put it back. Mm -hmm. If it's <laughs> not the right size, put it back. But, okay. you know, like go to the sales rack first. Okay. Um, and then go to the other parts of the store because, and okay, I'm gonna give you a little trick to shop yeah. out of season. Shop, shop out of season. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. So it's it's spring. It's going into the summer. We're looking at shorts and like, uh, -uh you're not looking at shorts. You're not looking at tank tops. You got those already. Where would you got? <laughs> What you are looking for is spring attire for next year. That's what you're uh, looking for. Okay, got it. Okay. <laughs> you're not, and it's, and that's the thing. It's like the mentality of that the fashion industry wants you to have is mm -hmm. to buy the latest. Right. If you are buying for quality, not mm -hmm. name brand, not for, you know, popularity or trends, if you are buying for quality, it doesn't matter if it's the latest because okay. it is quality and mm. it is going to last you. Right. Um, right. That's right. I don't fast fashion is a whole nother whole nother topic. It just <laughs> it com me, coming and going like with the seasons yes, coming and going. Exactly. Or okay. just like clothes that are put together really uh, poorly and they mm -hmm. only last for mm -hmm. half a season mm -hmm. so that you have to buy again right. really fast oh, wow that makes sense okay yeah so um so just as we're talking about it so what about color like how do you i know we looked at like veins before like how do you know what your colors would be oh, that, that helps um, you for shopping for me like, yeah. to narrow it down like what colors the easiest way to help mm -hmm. you the easiest and quickest i say i tell people is to go to a natural uh, source of light not your lighting in the house but like okay. natural source of light look at the inside of your wrist uh -huh. if your uh veins have a like bluish or purple color then you are in the cool color family okay, okay. you should not be wearing warm tones okay <laughs> they're gonna make you look drained and 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 you know <laughs> okay so what, what kind of tones would that be or what would that look like um cool like blues um purples and even the purples can they have a range of cool to warm like every color mm -hmm. honestly you can wear any color just okay. know what range it is that color okay. whether it's a cool tone versus a warm tone okay. so a cool blue mm -hmm. versus a warm blue mm -hmm. warm blues are like turquoises um like in that family okay whereas a cool blue is more teal so okay. turquoises have more green in them mm -hmm. and teals have more blue in them okay okay so if you look at a color wheel like there is a distinct, you know, like cutoff where okay. the warm colors are like the reds, the oranges, the yellows, um, the greens versus the cool colors, which are like the blues, but red can also be in a cool color family. So, mm -hmm. okay. you know, that's, that's, that's color theory. <laughs> okay. And then, so, so you mentioned, so you mentioned that the lighter veins and what was the other? Okay. One? So yeah. the other, and so if you have the blue or purple, that's cool. If you have like greenish mm -hmm. color, um, to your veins, greenish or turquoisey mm -hmm. kind of color, yeah. mm -hmm. then you are in the warm family. So okay. this yellow would uh -huh. look great on you, but actually I'm cool. So okay. there are certain colors like, um, uh, RGB. So red, green, blue, looks good for me in the okay. cool color. Right. Okay. Um, and then you can break things down to be like spring, autumn, winter, mm -hmm. you know, summer, but just think cool and warm. If and you warm. think okay. cool and warm, you'll fall into the right category. And then whatever color you like, you try it on and like if it mm -hmm. makes your skin looks drab or, you know, like ashy or, Mm -hmm. shadowy, mm -hmm. then that's mm -hmm. not the color for you. 
Okay. If it makes your skin like pop and like mm-hmm. look vibrant and alive, mm-hmm. then that is your color. Okay. So I'm thinking, so once you put on clothing, that's the right color and the right shape. There's something about it that just makes you feel better and stand taller. I know I've done that. Yeah. I know. And even before our, our previous uh, coach we had on, Sophia, she was talking about going to a store and you see this amazing outfit. You try it on. It's like perfectly fitted, perfect color, perfect shape. And it's just like you walk out and when you put that outfit on, you just stand taller. Yeah. You know, that, that confidence and like she was talking about success, like that feeling of success is like, wow, yes. like whenever you put that outfit on. So um, there's some truth to that, right? I mean, yeah. And it's more yeah. about how you feel in your clothes. Okay. When you feel like this is fitting me perfect, it's hit all the right spots, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> and mm-hmm. then, <laughs> then you're like, shoot, you can't tell me nothing. I know yes. I look good in this. <laughs> so that, that's great. I don't great. Even so- need a compliment from you. I know I look good. <laughs> <laughs> so it's finding, yeah, the right color, the right shape. And then when you start kind of ex- exploring that and you start realizing it helps to narrow it down. So when you go shopping, it's easier, at least for me to hone in and be like, Oh, like mm-hmm. if I have a, a top, that's just a regular neckline, it, it makes, it looks funky, but if I have yeah. like a deeper cut or like a boat neck, I'm like, okay, that yep. feels better, but it's neck funny. Lines, how those, those neck necklines lines are, are important. That's, that's something that gives mm-hmm. to the look. Um, okay. people with broader shoulders should mm-hmm. wear like a V neck or okay. kind of like, and that's just so that it cuts um, mm-hmm. into like this area. Cause if you okay. just have like one blank palette going straight right. across, mm-hmm. then it makes your shoulders look wider oh, or bulkier. Right. right. So right. again, right. just going back to the balance, um, mm-hmm. the eye that the eye brings balance. So, okay. okay. That's, you know, yeah. like when you look at it, you like something is off here. You use like you try something on, you know that the colors match, you know that it's your um, body shape, you know that, you know, mm-hmm. like this looks good on me, I, you know, but when you put something on, it's just like something's a mm-hmm. little bit off. It mm-hmm. is usually about just the balance, which okay. you might need to do like a half tuck or, you know, like tuck it all the way in or something like that to kind of show the waist and to, mm-hmm. to bring a shape to it. And that's mm-hmm. really it. Most women Mm -hmm. know how to dress. Mm -hmm. They know what to wear. Mm -hmm. They just don't know how to wear it. Oh, yeah. Because remember you taught me too about like tucking my shirts different ways so you can show the waistline then let Mm -hmm. it hanging over because then it it takes away that symmetry, right? So tucking the way you tuck it. Okay. Yeah. A lot of times Uh the things that women think are hiding things, Mm -hmm. it's not. (laughs) Like they wear like bigger, like, oversized shirts to Mm -hmm. maybe hide the tummy or to come past Mm -hmm. the butt so they can hide Mm -hmm. the butt. It's Mm -hmm. like, it's really drawing attention to that or it's making you look bigger than you actually are. So, so the goal for that one would be to create symmetry instead of hiding it. Yeah, exactly. Okay. That's so good. Okay. So, okay. So one more question. So what about like age appropriateness? Is that even a thing? Or is it just what feels comfortable to you? Or feels good I don't to think you? age appropriate is a thing. Okay. Let me tell you, if you look in like fashion magazines, you will see like these older women, like <laughs> getting it, like with, <laughs> their, with these outfits. I'm like, oh, I like that. You know, like yeah. mm-hmm. they, they like put colors together, like look at, and let me just, I'm preface this with like, look at like French magazines or mm-hmm. European magazines, not American magazines, because mm-hmm. Here, ageism is a thing. Mm -hmm. Um, So there's not a lot of older models or Mm -hmm. fashion icons. But Mm -hmm. when you look at Europe, like Mm -hmm. they just look so like Mm -hmm. the older women, so sophisticated. So I'm like, that that dress looks like I could wear that. Like, you know, it's not Mm -hmm. not a thing. It's about like what you feel comfortable in. When you gain that confidence, like Mm -hmm. this is hitting all the right spots. Mm-hmm. it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks is how I feel in it. Mm-hmm. Then, you know, like you're good as gold. doesn't matter your age. If you walk out the house and you're all like, Oh, is people looking at me? Are people looking mm-hmm. at me? Are, you know, like, do, mm-hmm. is this too old? Do I, am I too old for, to wear this? Or, you know, like mm-hmm. then that's what you're going to perceive that everybody else is thinking. Mm-hmm. And then you're going to feel like I shouldn't be wearing this over 40. And I'm like, right. uh, okay. So it's what looks good on you and what, what, like it's like we're talking about um, ex- accentuating or whatever, featuring certain yeah. parts of your body that you really like. Yeah. Um, 
Because if you think of Tina Turner, mm -hmm. Tina Turner was wearing oh, like mini skirts well into her 50s, 60s. So right, I'm just saying, true. like, who, you can't tell Tina she can't wear a mini skirt. <laughs> her legs are the bomb. Okay. I know. I know. She's amazing. <laughs> I know. That's so cool. That's so, a good point. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then um, a, a black, black and white. Can anybody wear those colors? Those are neutral colors. Okay. Um, black. White, however, mm -hmm. <laughs> I would say look at the shape, the tone of the white, because mm -hmm. if you are a cool color, mm -hmm. pure white will look great on you. Okay. If you are a warm color, pure white will make you look washed out. Uh -huh. And you should wear more of a creamy white, mm -hmm. an off white, an eggshell white, mm -hmm. something with a little yellow tone behind it. Okay. Okay. And then with black, it, either way. Black is neutral. There are okay. neutral colors. So black, navy blue, camel, mm. um, what mm -hmm. like denim? Brown. Like denim? Yeah, okay. the den the denim color. Like um oh. brown can be neutral. It has to be right in the middle, but there okay. are some cool browns and some warm browns. Mm, okay. Mm -hmm. And then even like seasonally sometimes it, I don't know if it changes too. There's probably so many variables. I think like seasonally, like the light, how, how bright it is outside with the clothes that you have might like some certain colors might look better than other seasons. I don't know. I'm just. Yeah. I think that that's thinking, that yeah. um, when you get into like summer mm -hmm. versus autumn mm -hmm. versus, um, you know, spring yeah. versus winter colors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a whole other thing. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> this is good stuff. <laughs> I love, but I love summer the and side. winter, summer and winter are cool colors. Autumn and spring are warm colors. If oh. anybody, if if you ever do like a color, mm -hmm. right, you know, like test or something like that, because there's a bunch of those out there, and they're like, "Oh, you're autumn." Okay, what's that mean? You right. know, mm -hmm. you can <laughs> well, look it up. Warm colors. You're welcome. <laughs> okay. <laughs> cool. <laughs> I know that, that it keeps it easier because we understand, I think, by seasons more so than yeah. like a color wheel, unless you know the color wheel and understand mm -hmm. that. Cool. Mm -hmm. This is awesome. Thank you so much for sharing this stuff. I love you're because welcome. I just want the practical side of all this and how this works. And then obviously, as we're working on ourselves and our bodies are changing, you just kind of go with the flow and doesn't mm -hmm. matter about your age. It's just how you feel, um, what you feel good in and confident in and yeah all that stuff and then and understanding like where confidence comes from yeah so um so there basically com obviously com comes from the inside right god puts that right. in us it's just i don't think anything you want to share about that as we everybody i mean the world tries to tell you that you are something that you are not you know because they're trying to fit you into that box and it goes back to like because that's easier if mm. everybody's doing all the same thing Mm -hmm. but that's just not the way that God created us right where we all have a specific thing that we're supposed to be doing on this earth mm -hmm. um we have all gifts skills and talents that God have has given us and he's just really waiting for us to use them so he can mm -hmm. say you know yeah mm -hmm. I'm with you mm -hmm. right yeah it's like but right. you got to step into those gifts mm -hmm. and not listen to other people who tell you like no 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 that's not the gift here everybody get this gift like that's mm -hmm. not that's mm -hmm. not how god created everybody yeah and i love it too because it's also kind of speaks to me in regard to with fashion and confidence when i was growing up it was all about hiding my body like oh you don't want people to see you or you don't you know you're a girl you don't want to expose your i'm not, not you know not fully expose myself obviously but you know right. you want to dress very like modestly which is fine you know there's no shelter for different things yeah right so, so different <laughs> beliefs and obviously my mom grew up catholic and so it was very right. you know conservative as far as that goes um yeah. but then as i got older i always had that level of shame and guilt about my body because exactly that's what the message and the beliefs i was told about my body and um and that you shouldn't you should only wear you know certain types of bathing suits and cover up your body and put a towel mm -hmm. on right away or just it was always like mm -hmm. oh. but then as you i don't want to make anyone struggle Right. That was a big thing. And so that's one thing I had a question and it's, and it's personal. It's very personal. That's like, I know it's kind of mm -hmm. a sensitive topic too, is like how you dress and how women, how you might uh, make, have a man struggle or whatever. But then mm -hmm. it, for my own life, I had to get over that a little bit and find the happy medium because I was so on the one extreme afraid of my body yes. and showing it or anything. But the other time my mom would say, Oh, you know, you look great. If you got it, flaunt it. So I'm like getting two messages that were very right contradictory but i still wanted to feel beautiful 
So yeah. I'm like, well, how do I feel beautiful if I can't show my body, but if I've got it, flaunt it. But what do I do with that? <laughs> right. Like, what? who? Who said what? <laughs> and, yeah. And honestly, so there was so much true. contradiction, but yeah, go ahead. And it's true. Mm-hmm. It is about personal conviction in that area. Mm-hmm. And I mm-hmm. think that the the issue that most of us face is that people want to place on you their convictions. Mm-hmm. And so um, I think that when you are confident about who you are, mm-hmm. then uh, what other people expect of you, just you, you're you able to realize that that's an expectation for them that I did not agree to. So it's mm. not fair of them to expect that of me. Uh, we like, did not have a mutual agreement. Right. Like it's their thing, their belief or style that's that, that they were convicted of. And that's, that's, that's right. And, and that's it's, cool. It's, that's yeah. fantastic. Right. But it's for, it's for you. Right. <laughs> that's, not, that's not for me. Right. And right. so mm-hmm. I, there is a medium mm-hmm. in between the, if you got it flaunted versus like covering things up and, right. I, and there's a, there's a space in the middle there. Um, but mm-hmm ultimately you cannot control the way that someone else perceives Mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's one of the downfalls of our society is that we try to control the way that other people perceive us. Mm -hmm. And we also use scripture to back that up. And it's very unfair. Like you must be above reproach. Mm -hmm. So whatever someone is thinking, you have to combat fight with. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. who am I reading here like mm-hmm, how do I know? you know mm-hmm, and so mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. being above reproach is not for others it is mm-hmm. for you and right. your conviction right and that, that's interesting too because I'm, I'm noticing too um over the years that you know with, with me trying to navigate my personal convictions and beliefs about all of like body type and all that stuff um mm-hmm is that God is, I'm, I'm allowing him to show me the beauty that he created in me Yes. and, and to, um, not be prideful of it, but to like take pleasure in it. Yeah. Like, wow, God, you made me like this and it's amazing and it's beautiful and embrace that beauty and, mm-hmm. um, and, and not be afraid to, to allow it to let it be what it is. You know, if, even if I had like a big mole on my face or something, it's like, that's there. I'm going to embrace it. It is what it is. Yes. Or, and, and, and it's okay to feel beautiful. It's, yes. We don't have to hide. We don't have to say, Oh, I'm not, you know, it's like, yeah, you're awesome. You're gorgeous. You know, like share it, you know, that's God, God created it, you know, like, like a perfect piece of art, you know, not that, you know, that's just one extreme or the other, not that, you know, it's going out there and totally flaunting everything, but, but be, but being beautiful and, and however that looks like to me and maybe well, it is the, showing more. The, I don't know. <laughs> well, the passage yeah. says mm. the greatest mm. command is to love God and to love mm. others as you love yourself. Right. Right. right? Mm-hmm. A lot of people miss that third party, which is themselves. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. And so it's like loving God. Yeah. We got that. Love mm-hmm. others. Oh, I just got poured into other people as you love yourself you cannot love other people the mm-hmm. way that god wants you to love other people if you don't love yourself mm, first you yeah. cannot reflect to them or pour mm-hmm. out to them the mm-hmm. love that god has for you if you don't even understand what that love is and mm-hmm. love yourself the same way mm-hmm. you can't yeah, do it. Inter- yeah that's true it's funny too because i'm thinking about it like you know you know, if I have a cute outfit that I really like and it's showing my arms, I'm like, oh, I like this part of my body. I, I was at the baseball field last week and I'm like, oh, yeah, there's lots of dads there, but it's just, it's just a, a maxi dress, not even a big deal, right? Yeah. But but then I thought in my mind, I'm like, oh no, they're, what if they're looking at me? And I'm thinking, you know what, what if they are? Like, thank you, Lord, for creating this in me. You know, thinking, thank you, Lord, for making me look this way and making me beautiful, you know, and I own it and I love it. And if they admire it, that's because you created it you know, and, and it's, and it's not my responsibility to think, oh no, they're looking at me. It's like, well, God, you convict them. You know, if this is a thing, maybe they're just appreciating, you know, or maybe not, it could just be in my head. <laughs> and there's a saying, there's yeah. a saying, uh, or, uh, I heard Tabitha Brown. I don't know if you guys know Tabitha Brown, but she said this one time before, and she said, it is not your business. What other people think of you. Mm, it's not your business not your business yep mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, it's their none business. of your business mm-hmm. what other people think of you yeah this is good <laughs> i love this yeah if this i'm not it. worried about what other people are thinking of me i'm just minding my business mind your business <laughs> yeah 
yeah, just, yeah, yeah, just do your thing. I know, just love on you. Yeah. Yeah. Other people. Yeah. I mm -hmm. think, yeah, just thinking about what other people think of just as so many layers of mm -hmm. worry that right. God has already freed you from. Right, right. <laughs> Is oh. it going to add an hour to your day, to your life? To yeah. Any of it. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> so true. Oh my gosh, we are totally like over time. But anyway. <laughs> Okay, I have to There's a question, okay. I think, and that asks yes. a question. Okay, we'll do it real quick. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my 90 year old mother in law still talks about the behavior uh -huh. of the nuns from her Catholic schooling. Mm. How can I help her release this? Mm. She's a strong woman who is still wounded. She has tried so many religions over the last 70 years. Wow. That's deep. <laughs> yeah. Was the behavior, uh, bad behavior, like very forceful? Me? Yeah, I've heard that before too um mm -hmm. you can unmute it if you want in it yeah you can totally engage with me <laughs> yes i think that um just speaking from the couple of friends that i have who have a catholic school background um it really is for you to help her if she if she's asking you for help with it it's more about Mm, pointing her towards God and the relationship that she has with God versus mm -hmm. other people. Um, when that is solid, I think that it's easy to see that people have choices and everyone makes choices. God gives us that freedom to have choices. I mean, this is why we are where we are. Thanks, Eve. Um, <laughs> you know, like that we have those choices. And when you, um, and some people make bad choices, you know, in the name of God, like think of like the Crusades. Ooh, yikes. That is a horrible part of Christian her history, right? Think of slavery and how people, whites used you know, like Christianity to keep people mm -hmm. in slavery. Mm -hmm. um, and so like people can weaponize the word of God or people can live by the word of God and just like helping her with that type of verbiage. Like, you know, it was horrible that those nuns used the word of God to weapon, like as a weapon. Like it's sad when people do that. Um, it's sad when people, you know, like take something that is good and twist it to use it for bad and god doesn't like it you know and ultimately they have to answer for that and so i think the only way the only thing that you can do in helping her is continue to point her towards god and her relationship with god mm -hmm. yeah that's foundational yeah, when you when you bring in other people and other things, it kind of um, distracts from God and God's love um, because people are going to people. We just we're <laughs> we are, you know, there's good and there's bad, but we are fickle. Mm -hmm. We are fickle. That's true. Yeah, that's so true. Awesome. This is so and good. So okay. Just continue to point her towards the love love of God. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Okay. So we should probably wrap this up. So thank you. This is awesome. I love it. Love it. Love it. Okay. So, um, yeah. So anything you want to, you want to share to take away that we could, I know it's, we've talked about a lot of different things. Um, I don't any tips or pointers that you think would be, uh, take away for, I know we talked about a lot for me, it's really just, um, getting rid of those old narratives and finding out who you are mm -hmm. and how you want to present mm -hmm. yourself in the world versus how people say you should mm -hmm. um and really just finding that beauty loving god loving others as you love yourself so making sure that you are loving yourself the way that and seeing yourself the way that god sees you mm -hmm. um and he and there's so many passages about the way that god sees you mm -hmm. um you know he thought yeah. of, he saw you in the womb. He created you. You are beautifully and wonderfully made. You are more precious than rubies. You know, all of those things. Yeah, like, Song of Songs really, has a ton. <laughs> yes. And really owning that, you know, like we sometimes we can read it, but it's the negative narratives in our head that tells us like, mm, he's talking about somebody else, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> he's talking about somebody else, not me, but like really owning that, like, no. 
replace your name with like anything that's in there. Like God loves Annette. Mm. Annette was made beautifully mm. and wonderfully made. She mm. is more precious than Ruby, mm-hmm. you know? And just like really putting your name in there and taking ownership of that. Mm. That's cool. I love that. Yeah, that's so true. I know it's like, yeah, ownership of who you are in Christ and how amazing we are and just yeah, just own that, that yeah. person. So that's yeah. great. Okay. All right. Yep. So I'm going to, I'm going to share in the chat here, um, where you can find more about Stephanie and what she's doing and how she's sharing. And if you want to grow more, even if you're um, watching the recording or live, um, you can go to her website. I'm actually going to send it, um, post it to you in our Facebook group and oh, cool. anywhere this is being recorded. So, um, I'm going to share it right now. I think I have it on my, oh yeah, there we go. So, okay. So I have, I have here, you have a five, a free five day identity devotional, and then you also have your group. So tell mm-hmm. us a little bit about, your, about those two things. Um, so the free five day identity devotional is really just that your identity in Christ. And so okay. really, so that can actually help you <laughs> with like taking that ownership of okay. who you are and who God says you are. Okay. And then the Black Sheep Collective is my membership program. And that one is, um, it's 50 a month. Okay. That is a paid membership. Is 50 a month. And really what we do is we go backwards so that we can move forward. Um, go back to where your negative narrative originated mm-hmm. um, so that you can start to transform those narratives and move forward in the confidence of God. Yeah. No, it's not, it's not so freeing. Yes. But it's, it like, but it's hard. I'm sure it's scary because it's a, that's a big transformation. But at the is. same time, like so much freedom and, and connectedness, connectedness with yeah. God at a different yeah. level. Yeah. Um, it's like very personal. It becomes very yes. personal between you and God than just what somebody else is telling you. Yeah. About and so that's or- a, that one's a membership portal and there is a group that goes with that. Um, yeah. To that's- have community, because I think with that process, a lot of people think that they're alone. Mm-hmm. And when you realize that you're not alone mm-hmm. it, in anything, <laughs> whenever you realize that you are not alone and there are other people that have the same struggles, it just gives you Mm. a little bit more encouragement to keep the path and to really um, dig into who you are. That's so cool. Yeah. Thank you so much. I'm just going to pause the recording in a second here, but anyway, so thank you so much for being here. Thank you ladies for joining and whoever's uh, joining the recording. Thank you for being here and reach out to Stephanie. I'll share again, her links for where to find her and how to get more information about how to grow and who you are authentically, which sounds really cool and building confidence at the same time. So anyway, thank you so much for being here. And, thank you for um, having hopefully me. We'll see you in the group here and there. So yeah. Okay. <laughs> sounds good. Right. Okay. Bye. Thanks. Bye.